It was a very important goal for myself and Bill that whenever we're up on the surface world, that it still feels special a bit different to the real world because I think what makes the Aquaman movies really fun is getting the opportunity to visit lots of different environments. Are you seeing this? <laughs> it's not normal? Definitely not normal. As we established, there are seven Atlantean nations. One of the seven kingdoms is the Desert Kingdom. Back in the day, when Atlantis was above the ocean, the Sahara Desert was flush with water. And in there was a whole Atlantis kingdom. The deserter kingdom is where they would send their prisoners from Atlantis. This is one of my favorite sets because it's just kind of off the wall. This is a real old school set because it was a complete set. There wasn't a lot of trickery in it. And that's a lot of fun to do where you really rely on the skills of the craftsmen to bring the thing to life. Even when we were shooting the first film, James said, I had this idea of how I want to reintroduce you in the second film. So we needed something physical to show the amount of brutality that's been inflicted on him. So that's why we find him, me, looking like Tom Hanks at Gasway, really. <laughs> hmm. You look rough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy looks like Tom Hanks. He's all emaciated and he's just like skinny, like on and ribs. It's basically and ribs. I mean, look, you leave somebody alone for long enough, you, you're gonna come back tan with a beard and long hair. I mean. <laughs> because we're on this different journey, we really had to find other things for them to wear. One of the ones that James was really intrigued by early on was something he wore in the comics. It's a stealth suit. <laughs> This is a unbelievably cool suit designed by Richard and his team. We started with clay sculpt based on a form of Jason, took it from the clay sculpt into a digital sculpt, and then 3D printed from the digital sculpt. We give it a very highly polished chrome finish with a fine mesh stretched over the top of it. And so basically it's a bit like a dance costume really and allow him to do amazing stunts. Ooh, it's not quite as good as mine, but you know, they tried. They give him this invisibility suit so people can't see him because he couldn't just walk right in here. And the people that live there now have degraded, so they're pretty scary. <laughs> like these guys who live underground and they don't have much to live on. These desert people have very little water in their body. The only way that they live is by trying to find blood, so they have sort of a vampire background to them. I had designed a really awesome look for the desert characters, but I couldn't actually put stun guys in those suits. It just wasn't realistic. It meant I had to go back and bring more practicality to the design. The idea is that they've been in this subterranean well for eons slowly sort of degrading and falling apart. So they, their costumes are meant to look very ancient and dilapidated, basically. Linen, laminated together, and then breaking it down looks very similar to the kind of way the Egyptian mummies were embalmed. We're making deserter baton staffs and spears. We had very loose concepts. We want this baton this length. It has to be for the stunts, it has to be soft. It's gonna light up, but it also needs to be robust because they're gonna be fighting with them. We've got some wonderful foams and rubbers to give us very, very convincing metals. They're all very, very stunt-friendly, really. Let's have a look. How are you there, sir? Oh, hey, this guy's pretty good. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> Costume department, prosthetics department made those creatures come to life, and we had some really talented stunt performers playing the deserters. Oh. And it was hot, it was squeezing on them. It was tough. We had to go in and make sure all the walls and the floors were completely safe for them. That was the first big fight, so we had to go big. Stunt team, badass. They knock all these guys out, and then we get out with the chase. When Arthur busts storm out of prison, they have these creatures called Jajus, which are giant, sand-eating, rock-eating creatures. They have giant teeth at the front that spins, and it acts like a boring drill that drills into the earth. And they spit the rocks out, these little horns they have on their heads. So they literally can tunnel through the sand walls. That's galloping. But this shit 
It works better when the camera's on. <laughs> All right. You are really booking it along. So we're going to get the fans really hitting you to sell the fact that you are oh, absolutely cool. flying along. We see them climbing up the side of a wall and then going upside down and then digging into the underside of the cave ceiling. It's a really crazy fun sequence. One of the most fun parts of shooting the film was location work. We went down to the magnificent stretch of beach called Salt and Sands. You're probably looking at, it's an 8.6 meter high tide, so it looks like it will be right up by the wash line. The judges can just run off anywhere. Who we'll get the bur burrow back into the sand. Arthur tells Arm to go, run, run, run. The beach's that way, right? All right, the water's right there. Let's go, skinny jeans. This was a thing that James had in his mind several years ago. He wanted that moment of me coming out of the water and getting the water back in my veins. And I just discussed with him visually what he wanted. So, um, I mean, honestly, that's the reason that I didn't take a job in the spring. <laughs> this was about a four month process to get to where we felt comfortable because he wanted it less bulky as Jason and more ripped, for lack of a better word. So what we did, we had a series of doubles. I have both a skinny stunt double and a skinny acting double. So whether they are digitally shrinking my body down, they can use the combination of those. We just gave them whatever they needed. Uh, please, sir, don't worry about the holes. Just do what you can, gang. Wear it down as soon as you can, please, before we lose the light. The best part of this is the pizza that I'm going to enjoy later, once I don't have to worry about all of this. Okay, you're going to start lowering the platform down, guys. And three, two, one, go! We've had these real iconic moments, and I think James wanted that for Orm. He knew we wanted to make a real big splash. Forgive the pun. I said it. Ah! All right. Good job, little brother. High five.